Actually, at first I, I will plan to show the only the bands network that I, I have in mind now to to determine the, how long the should the mere strain measurement last. But uh, I think uh, because here I have uh, uh, Sebastian Son and uh, Dan Shaw, two authors of the thesis that I like the most. So I would like to show my recent uh, result, research. So you can give me some feedback. So I will be appreciate for that. Uh, so this presentation. Uh, okay, so it's about using SCADA data in remaining fatigue life of monopi support structures. It's just the title, I make it up for the uh, PhD seminar in Brussels just a week ago, I think. And uh, so. The problem with the with the monopi foundation is that uh, scour and corrosion uh, of the of the foundation pile may happen, and it will affect uh, the uh, remaining lifetime of the support structures. So the idea how to predict the the time to go to inspect. Uh, so the message I want to deliver is that by updating wind speed distribution it is possible to update the remaining lifetime of the Monopi Foundation. Uh, I will make that clear by showing you how I update the wind speed distribution and how I estimate the remaining lifetime based on the measurement of the wind speed and the stretch range, uh, strain measurement also, strain uh, measurement data. And I show the application with some results. Uh, so to update wind speed distribution, I I need to use the, the measurement of 10 minutes mean wind speed together with the, no, this is just about the wind speed distribution, sorry. So I assume that the 10 minute mean speed distribution is following the wide world distribution. Uh, and I know the parameter of that distribution from the design stage. And I assume that the shape parameter is deterministic while the scale parameter is normally distributed with unknown mean and unknown standard deviation. Then this scale parameter can be updated using the several years of wind speed uh, measurement data after structure go into operation. So just to summarize, we have the scale parameter following the normal distribution, mu, the mean in normal, and then the sigma following invert gamma two, and then the joint distribution in, uh, The posterior density function of uh, mu and sigma is also the same, so it's a uh, <coughs> conjugate distributions. And the predictive is following the student's density distribution for the scale parameter. Uh, yeah, and following that, I can update the wind speed distribution over time using the measurement data. Which yes. uh, wind speed is wind. Uh, 10 minutes uh, yeah. wind speed. Uh, it's from Chicada, so it's on the, yeah. on, on the wind turbine. Yes. But that wind speed data will not be used alone. I use it together with the concurrent measure strain data at the point that I am interested in. Or you can say, well, maybe for the uh, monopi foundation, the uh, dangerous point location is not on air, but uh, near the mud light, uh, location. So we, we need to use kind of, uh, um, call it a virtual sensing approach, which actually just to a method to extrapolate the stress that you, you got from measurement at some location above water for the location under the water. So by doing that, you also have uh, the uh, what you call it, derived the strain data, or here I use directly the measure strain data, uh, just for uh, illustration. <coughs> so from the mere strain, we get the stress, and then we have the stretch range, to, um, stretch range. and then from the wind speed uh, data, we, uh, we fit the wind speed 
the terminate wind speed of each year into one uh, YBU distribution with the, the shape param parameters uh, the same as the one we have from the design stage. So I keep the same shape parameter and I try to use the, the bad fist approach to find the scale parameter for that year. So by doing that, I can have the different value of scale parameters for each year, for different years. Yes. <coughs> so by relating the uh, wind speed and this uh, straight range together, I can calculate the fatigue damage using minor rule and then calculate the failure probability and uh, estimate the remaining lifetime using the uh, darkest uh, reliability uh, index. So this is the limit state function. So as I said, I have the, the uncertainty in the uh, minor rule. I have here a summation over uh, t years of, uh, in operation up to the year that we are interested in. This is j from 1 to n u 10. This is, so I separate the, the wind distribution into different <coughs> bins. So like I separate them into different bins and I calculate fatigue damage from each bin of wind speed. <coughs> so that's why I have that summation. And inside, just this is the, from the straight range distribution in that bin. And this is the probability of that bin. Uh, that that uh, the limit function that I have. So I solve that limited function using form to have the <coughs> reliability index. And this is uh, about the random variables I have. I have the uncertainty in the measurement, uh, and stretch concentration factor in the ascent curve, in stretch range, and this is just the, the scale parameter of the wind speed distribution. Yes. This is the, the way I estimate the remaining lifetime. So we all know using the target safety level. But this is about how to de determine the target safety level. And about the application, I need to have the data of 10 minutes mean wind speed. I need to have strain data. I need to have pitch RPM to uh, clean the, the, the measure data, to get rid of some errors from measurement, identify the operational case. And then I need to have the geometrical detail of the join. That's the four types of information I, I need. And this is the updated distribution of the, wind, uh, of the scale parameter of wind speed distribution uh, using uh, three years of measurement <coughs> the continuous one is the one uh, before updating, uh, and the prior one is the one using uh, the updated one is the one continuous, and the prior one is the, the dashed line. So you see it move uh, to the left. So uh, it's, it's just a little bit. So it's, we can consider that okay, it's uh, smaller than predicted in the design stage. But uh, it's good estimation for in the design. <coughs> and this is the result of remaining lifetime. I didn't show it in the real lifetime, but it's a ratio of the reference life. So you can see after three years measurement, we have 1.4. Uh, that the, so the re remaining lifetime is increased a little bit. And for the year four, five, six, I don't have the data yet, so I assume I have the same mean uh, of the samples. Yes. 
and I reduce the standard deviation using the number of samples there. So uh, you see it not, uh, it's not uh, linear, it's starting to reduce, but it's not significant. <coughs> and this is just to show the, the effect of load factor I use in the limited set function. It's uh, designed, well, it affects, uh, it's very important to the, to the um, predict the remaining lifetime. And this load factor coming from the uh, stress concentration factor or factor to consider the corrosion effect or the interpolation factor from the measure location to the uh, underwater location, for example. And I put everything in just one load factor to consider. So come back to the message I want to deliver that uh, if, I you, if I can update the wind speed distribution, it's possible to update the remaining lifetime at the Monopi Foundation. <coughs> uh, yes. So basically, that's it. But uh, I don't want to stop here yet because I still have two more slides. First, I want to have some, uh, I want to have some feedback on this one, and then I will show the uh, the one I really want to, well, to connect from what I learned here to the problem of determine the the duration of strain measurement. Like, uh, okay, how long should I measure? This? But the one thing shocked me a bit. If you go to the uh, where you define the random variables of the problem, yes, and you mentioned the uh, the stress concentration factor. Uh, yes, it's not it's the table where you show the distribution. Yes, what is so? You said K is the stress concentration factor. Uh, no stress concentration factor. Ah, X. 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 Yes, K here is the first stretch range in each uh, B in the wind speed. We have one distribution of stretch range for each B in the wind speed. Yeah, yeah. And I consider also yeah, uh, uncertainty yeah. for that one. And so, so I, I don't, where did you take the assumption that the stress concentration factor is modeled by a log normal with mean one? Uh, it's an assumption. And do you mean why the mean one? Yes. Uh, the, the mean can be larger than one, so I take it out and I put it in a load factor here as a deterministic value, and I just take one and then I consider for the distribution. So the deterministic value is more in the order of three or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's more than It's more than certainty. It's What, I mean, when you show the posterior distribution versus the prior distribution of the stresses and... Uh, that one is for the wind speed distribution, yes. Uh, what is your... What, what is the... How, how, do you, how do you explain that the difference is quite uh, small? And also that... Uh, and in particular that the standard deviation is not... Changing very much. So yes. It indicates that you learn very little. Like, like so it seems that the life view is very flat. The, the reason for that is that uh, I, I have uh, 15 years of measurement from the design of similar science. I use that statistics to determine the prior information. And because it's 15 years compared to three years of measurement in, uh, in construction, uh, after construction. Context, you, you have somehow a predictive model that applies to an entire area, but, but in fact, you have, of course, on each side, you have somehow slight differences. 
Yeah. But this is somehow all included in the variation of the parameters over the area. Right? Mm, yeah. And now you pick only out one spot and you want to update uh, on the on the on the parameter. Yeah. So I think it's crucial to make a fair treatment of the prior information that applies to a big area and compared to that the site specific information. You know what I mean? So the site specific information might, <coughs> might weight much more. Yeah. And, and and even even your your distribution on the bigger area is somehow based on so do you mean so do you mean the prior information that I use from similar sites is not uh, really appropriate here? I should use. You should not use one to one the number of observations because these observations they don't uh, they don't uh, apply to the exactly same population you're interested in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have a little bit more general model for wind speed or which bigger area, yeah, yeah. But now you have site-specific measurements. Exactly, yeah. So it's not that you have the 17 data on the entire area, you wait with your three site-specific uh, data points, you should actually not use 17 as a weight of the prior, but much less because you know, okay. that, that information you get when you make an assumption uh, how much your parameters vary over the area, then you get a little bit in, in, in an idea what all of magnitude is. Mm -hmm, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So, so for instance, this N <coughs> we had in my simple example. Yeah. It was this was also just a function of uh, uh, a relationship between the variances. Right? Yeah. And then you suddenly get uh, N prime zero point three three, less than one. Yeah. It was just this relation of the variances suggests that. Depends on your hierarchical setting of the or assumptions of the parameters. Okay, yeah. So that's I think seventeen is of course much too too heavy. Okay. Without having more details about your project, but I think that's you might reach the effect of your information. Yes. So you suggest me to do kind of sensitivity on the number of samples I should use for the prior information. Um, first of all, we get a feeling what is the effect, but in the end, uh, the number of or the weight of the prior information you can only uh, find out when you make such uh, uh, assumptions on how much do your parameters vary in the area where your 17 a priori data points come from. Yeah. 17. Yes, I say it's not really important the variation here because the the remaining lifetime, in uh, as a factor of the <coughs> of the reference life, is just 1.4, 1.42. It's not really significant. If you multiply with 20 years of lifetime, then yeah, I mean, uh, maybe <coughs> something uh, something general, uh, maybe. Uh, Try to uh, find uh, or to look also in the references of your models. <coughs> so usually, uh, and especially for wind turbines, the uh, model uncertainties in relation to fatigue are tremendous. Um, so, but in order to reflect this uh, situation, uh, maybe it's worth to uh, look in your model uncertainty model. So we have this X SCF. Yes. Uh, but uh, overall, this looked maybe uh, yeah maybe it's worth uh, to uh, look for the references uh, for the uh, modern uncertainties whether they are all covered. Uh, and then I would uh, so there's few uh, yeah. There is significant small uncertainties, and if we are able to uh, get rid of them, so basically, if we don't use models, but if we measure, then we don't have more uncertainties that we measure. Uh, at the location where the fatigue damage occurs, um, in, in that case, uh, there should be a significant effect on the fatigue life. Uh, and in deterministic terms, it's 
uh, it is basically we are getting rid of uh, conservatism. For this terms, we are reducing the monarchs. So, so uh, I think it's very good what you are behind. Um, but the specific modeling, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, for, uh, for what I've seen, uh, I would also think of two uh, two situations. Uh, they are somehow connected in your example, but uh, they may be uh, disconnected. So you can uh, update the uh, wind speed uh, distribution. Yes. Like you do, um, and then work. The rest uh, with the design modes, or you measure uh, yeah, the far field stress or even the hotspot stress, but then you don't need any wind speed distribution. Uh, or maybe yeah, if you continuously measure, uh, then you can just do a rate for counting and you get the damage. Yeah. And this is subjected then to your uh, measurement uncertainties, and maybe. Uh, the rainfall counting should be rather precise. Um, yeah, okay, this is the uh, both separate situations I see from what you have uh, told us. Yeah. So, uh, regarding what you said, if you are using a uh, limited function of fatigue in terms of damage, not in terms of physical, quant uh, physical parameter as crack uh, length. You can really get rid of a lot of mod uncertainty by measuring anything because this damage is not related to any physical observable quantity. So the mod uncertainty will always be there as, as long as you use this limited function. But uh, I understood the model uncertainty so, that. Yeah, stress derivation, like the method that use the virtual sensing, for example. Then we have uncertainty because we try to do the structural identification. So, but yeah, I don't consider it here, and I consider directly that I have the measurement data at that location that I am interested in. So, it did not happen so here. But Yes, thank you. Thank you for your patience. I have just two slides. Two slides here. Uh, 
So what I want to do is to uh, to determine the, the measurement duration for a string here in this uh, application. Uh, the owner asked me, uh, so how long I should uh, last the measurement campaign? Uh, I try to read by updating directly the thread distribution, but it doesn't work because the longer you, you measure, the less you have for the, for the variation. So <coughs> I cannot answer by doing that. So I try to read by doing the, the value of information approach. So just to summarize some main idea. So we have straight range assumed to follow by distribution with scale. This is a normal distribution with unknown uh, mean and unknown standard deviation. The shape is deterministic. And we can update that stretch range distribution using the measure string. And we can predict the meaning lifetime for the inspection, uh, to design for inspection. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, this, this is the idea I have now in mind. It's not well prepared, so I would like to have your feedback if uh, it's feasible to, to do it. So we have straight range, we have the, the uncertainty in the descent curve. We can calculate failure probability uh, at, the, at the end of the service life to see whether we need to do inspection or not. And then we have the cost of inspection. We need to send the diver there to, to go down to see the location. Uh, and for the straight range distribution, we have this uncertainty in the scale of the, of the wide distribution. Uh, and here the number of years of measurement related to the cost of measurement. And from the number of years of measurement, we have the mean of the samples, of the scale of all the samples, and the standard deviation of all the scales value for each year. So actually, uh, just two utilities. I have two utilities here. So uh, that's all I have in, now in mind to, de to determine the number of years of measurement for the string. The decision or a random variable? Sorry? Number of measures? Uh, it's deterministic. Deterministic? Yes. The decision. The decision. decision. It should be decision, yes. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Correct, yes. Thank you. Suggestions <coughs> from the audience? You mean here? Yeah, because you have an arc going into the decision of inspection. So uh, you calculate the failure probability at the, year, at the end of the service, like life, like at the year 20. Yeah. And then you can see whether the, it fail or not. So if it fail, then you should do the inspection. So you have a decision rule. Yes, yeah, so now it's a decision rule here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Your decision of inspection is not based on uh, the risk. Uh, That's a tough question. Uh, uh, I don't. I. am not sure that I understand you uh, 
completely, but. Uh, because we are measuring it's not total, total strength, but just the difference between your reading and actual reading, yes? So we have only the information about what was changed in strength, not what is the, in fact, uh, real strength of the material. So in the configuration of measurement, we have three strings, three string gauges installed on the uh, on the curriculum of the of the tower inside. So I think what we get is the real string. But uh, I I am not uh, deeply in uh, structural health monitoring, so I cannot make the distinction between the difference in strain or the real strain. I, I, I cannot make it. For you now? The, the comment was related to the fact that when you, when you put there the sensors, there is already a strain there. Okay. And you cannot measure that strain, it is already there. Because you put the sensor, you can measure the difference. Ah, strain, okay, yes. In that case. Absolute okay. value. Yes. In that case, yes. Correct. It's just the, 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 the difference, yes. But you consider fatigue, so you're considering the change in the. Yes. You actually consider the amplitude. So the, the, the absolute value, you can also play a role in the more advanced fatigue model. The new fatigue model, the absolute value of this, 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 this stress does not actually enter. No, so it's a set range. Yeah. In this case, it's not that critical. Yeah. You look only at that. That's what I'm saying. You yes. Are you range for counting? So it's just the difference. Yeah. You don't, you don't actually do Yes. So wait, uh, let's say it's a probability of fatigue damage. What do we do after the fatigue damage? Uh, I say if the, the the failure probability larger than five to the ten power of minus four, for example, then I consider it's failure. Yes, but what can you do? Uh, then. If it will fail after 20 years, then uh, the problem now at the foundation, and I should send the diver there to, to inspect to see whether it's because of the scar or because of the corrosion or something. Yes, fatigue damage. Then you need to repair. So you don't need to inspect. Yes, we will need to do something. We will need to do something, yes. But it will give us. Information and cost of the information, uh, but here I think you should uh, think of uh, issue uh, repair and action. Okay. Yeah. Yes. If you if you want to repair <coughs> what you are going to repair, I think it's going to be related to props. So you you really don't have. Your feedback between that uh, limit state function and what you are expecting, or the decision for repairing based on that inspection, because you cannot update that ever. You cannot update the damage based on what you see. Uh, no, yes, but after you repair it, then the the, the new measurement will give you uh, the feedback. Gives you a new, new state. Yeah, but if you don't repair, you just go for inspection and then you measure a gap. Oh, in that case, you, we, you, in that case we, we cannot update using only uh, that minor rule. We need to incorporate also the Paris law for correct propagation. Yes, and yeah, that uh, I want to show so, but uh, I see that Pablo already discussed with uh, Professor uh, Shaw about it, using the two information together. Yes. 
And if you know that you have a failure or not, there's no need to do an inspection. You want to learn from the inspection of the failure, but... but uh, yeah, or maybe I should uh, correct it to repair but action. But on the other hand, it should be, yes, uh, this inference diagram you, you make a measurement. The measurement is the mean and self deviation of samples. Yes, of this. So you measure the result. Yeah. But they're not used. So they, if you have no link going from those results to any decision, yeah. then there's no. You, in this diagram, you're not using the information. Okay. They, they will not affect the, the, the scale parameter here? Yes. Uh, of the, of the they will affect the scale parameter, but uh, if you uh, there, you have an update. But if you think of the decision here, right now the only decision is on inspection, and the decision on inspection, the only information you will have available is whether it fails or not. That's not what you have available. What you want to say is that you, 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 turn, you have information about the mean and the self deviation of your samples. Yes. But that means you have to put an arrow from those to the decision that you're going to take. So you have to, take a, you have to, you have to add an arrow from those samples to mean to self deviation, to inspection. But when you decide on the inspection, you have information from your monitoring system. But the inspection option here is to to the foundation, not for the for the stress. Who? To the foundation, to the <coughs> so uh, if structure will fail after twenty years, yes. then now I will send the diver to the to the site to check for the uh, scour or corrosion or crack at at. Uh, at the critical point under water. So, and to repair it, of course. If, if it you will fail, you will set the, the, the diver, okay. Yeah. But you still have the information from the... the, the you, have, you have available the information from the... Strain measurement. From strain measurement. Yes. So you should add this link from this, from this measurement the statistics to the inspection. So you mean I should have a crap propagation model inside this one? To connect from that one to the link. inspection there. Just add a link there. Maybe saying that when you do the exposition, you know about this. this. Yes, yeah, so you make the decision based on what you measure. Hmm. You're, you're measuring strain constantly? Yeah, on strain. No, I am at the uh, three or year four of the survey. But uh, if you if you think the life. structure will fail after twenty years, the state of the structure right now might be not that bad. Maybe it doesn't make sense. But uh, maybe the problem with cow that makes the stress higher than uh, predicted. Then we should correct that one to to maintain the uh, service life. Start, you may just 
Puts it at one point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Of your complete uh, temporary modeling. And then you go in the temporary dimension. This is the way forward in a more abstract sense. Okay, any more uh, points or points? <coughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.